So good evening, everybody. We continue in chapter, known the 50th chapter. There's a possibility that today we'll finish the chapter as a Hashem. As a Chaya Chaim Baruch That's the way the chapter actually finishes, if you can see. Um, we will at least make the attempt. So, Perek Nun, um, as this could be the final class on this chapter, you can see the whole um, message of this chapter on the tanyaonline.com website. Again, as we mentioned it, uh, for the newcomers, you, it's just simply easy to, a class which is easy to follow. It's set up in a way that the text is a separate scroll bar than the class is on a separate scroll bar as such. It's, again, easy to follow and so too easy access to all the previous classes, not only this chapter, the entire Tanya. And when you open up the chapter uh, the, uh, that you're looking for, again, it comes up in the same fashion. And so you're looking for, because many times, again, even in the classes, all we reference to other chapters which the Alter Rebbe expands on the idea that we're learning. And when you find it, it's, again, it's just a matter of a click away. So we are holding on page 140. 140 with, in the original text, all the way at the bottom, pretty much four lines before the the bottom of the page. We did begin, but this is kind of the uh, the, the entry into the final message of the Alter Rebbe. So, Basically, again, no need to elaborate because it is really a quick way to see the message of the unique message of this Pedic Nun. And Al Trebi speaks about a different, totally different type of uh, love to Akadish Baruch, he calls it Avo, the Milosh in a Avo, Kirish Bey Eish, the person totally engulfed in a fiery, passionate fervorous love to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, which leads to Klesa Nefesh Mamash, and as we explain, the complete subsumption, consumption of the soul into the infant, to the divine, completely, complete, with total ex- expiration. And the Altar begins, Seder Avay Deba Eisek Atayda Ba Mitzvah Sanim Shech Tzmchines Avazu. What is the subsequent Avayda? What is the order of the subsequent Avayda in one's occupation and Tayda Mitzvah, which comes from this intense love? And we pointed out last week, if it's Klesa Nefesh, if if there's a total expiration of the body as such, expiration of the body, that is, expiration of the body, so there is no subsequent Avayda. Like we mentioned last week, had another Avayda after that great excitement in rushing into the holy, uh, to the, in, in uh, uh, appreciating the divine to the extent that they were ready to leave their bodies behind, how did they serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu subsequently? They didn't because they passed on. As the Chafetz Chaim, as the Eidah Chaim speaks, uh, has his, in his commentary, uh, many others, but he, we have it in his commentary on Chumash, writes literally, he illustrates a whole image, a whole um, uh, illustration, if you will, of of Kleis uh, nefesh, literally, the complete consumption of the soul of another Babiu into the divine. They had such an aspiration, and such a pining, and such a yearning to the divine that they left their bodies behind. So because they, that was, again, an a, 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 a expression of complete Kleis nefesh to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So how did they serve the Kodesh Baruch the next day? They weren't around the next day. So really, it's again, it's a paradox. What does it mean? The order of the service of Kodesh Baruch again, in one's occupation in Teda and, and Mitzvahs, which stems, which comes from this intense love, apparently this intense love caused Kleis HaNefesh, and the Rebbe adds Mamash Kleis HaNefesh. So if it's Mamash Kleis HaNefesh, there is no subsequent Aveda. So this, again, we spoke about this last week. Not to get into it, it's just literally click away what, uh, what really, but it's, it's something which you can't really pinpoint and say that, uh, try to make exact sense of it. It's a kind of chidosh that the person didn't have actual klois nefesh, even though the experience itself, there should have been klois nefesh mamosh. al adds even the word mamosh. Mamosh klois nefesh means there is no say that Aveda after, and if it happens, a kind of a miracle, if you even will. But again, we try to sort of nuancedly explain this idea of it. what is that supposed to mean, say that Aveda, which is Nimshach in his Ava Azazu. Apparently, there's no Aveda, there's no person. But again, 
you can see it in the previous class, so we just move on. What is the Seder Aveda which comes from this intense love? So one would suggest, well, it's a constant, you know, the fire pushing back, or the fire um, rushing up, rather, back and forth, that again, another experience of Kleis HaNefesh, and yet another, even though the Kleis HaNefesh Mamash, there is no other, but at least the whole sensation is in, similar to the original sensation, the original uh, height, if you will, that the person reached, and this intense fervorous love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So the Altarev says quite to the contrary. When a person reaches that level, the whole experience of his, the whole focus of his Tehidah Mitzvah is kind of in a 180 degree expression. Why so? Because as we mentioned, that in the end of the day, what is the core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Yisav HaKadosh Baruch Hu, again, we elaborate on this towards the very end of this last class. So again, you can see it. So just to briefly, just to get into it again, the wording over here, the text, in order to move on. So the end of the day, because Baruch wants a dirba tachdeinim, which the Ebrish wants a dwelling place, a place in this very physical world. Which part of Akkadz Baruch wants a dwelling place in this very physical world? It's not at the end of Hashem's list. Oh, I have so many other things that occupy my mind, and I built a, I created a physical world and let that physical world also be refined and have it a dwelling place that I should feel comfortable and therefore I'll send a yidala down there with some tayna mitzvahs and let's let him put us so let him open the lights neira shemish masadam with his neshama the neira mitzvah with tayna eiren okay it'd be nice that this world also should have some shine and hopefully it more shine and till vahay Hashem amelach hakolot is the one of the Kodesh Baruch Hu will penetrate the very core essence of Eilam Azeh, and that would be pretty fine. And it'll take care of kind of the end of that list, that the Eilam Azeh should also be elevated and and uh, and uh, and sublimated towards the two Elokus, in other words, infused with the air of the light of Neh Mitzvah No, I said that's not at the end of Hashem's list. This is not only on the top of Hashem's list, this pretty much is what Hashem is all about. This is, this is the core essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. How could you say that? But like, how could you say the Torah is HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Amar Abayi is an Eichi Hashem Malikech. And the answer is, yes, Hashem placed himself in Torah. What part of Hashem? Not Alikech, not Hashem. And we mentioned in the past also, these are different levels of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Even the Shem HaAtzem of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's beyond that. It says in Zaya. <clears throat> the Anoichi, the core essence of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Loi Yisraam, is Loi B'Shem Ha'is, Loi B'Shem Kites, it's not hinted, no in letter, no hint, no in, even in a Kites, which is at the top of the letter, also cannot describe the core essence of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, understandably so, because Yud Kei Vav Kei, one way or another, it's some description, Hashem is understandably beyond description, that core essence of a Kodesh Baruch Hu placed himself in Taita, yes, in the Amr Abayah, on non nafshik Sovis Yehovis, says the Gemara, that my core essence, my Nefesh, I wrote it into Teira, I gave myself into Teira. Well, Yehovah said, I gave it over to you, but Yehovah's problem, the, the Ksavis and Yehovah's, I wrote myself, I gave myself into Teira. So Teira is not just one connects himself to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he follows Hashem's uh, bylaws, the way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, um, his rules and regulations, because he wrote it into Teira, and therefore when I learn Teira, I probably know what to do, and therefore I'll probably be a good boy in Hashem's classroom. No. Hashem, Teira, Eraisa, Vekuchabrichu, Kulachad, Hashem, and His Teira are one, are one entity and one part of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. They are Neichi. The core essence of a Kodesh Baruch Hu is in Teira. When you open a Gemara, Omer Abayi, this is the core essence of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, which again we mentioned, based on the Mishnah, it's beyond, Gan Eden, and the Ein Areich. Gan Eden is one world, Kibbeka Hashem, Tzuri Lam, and maybe to create the whole Gan Eden with the Yud. Where's the whole Eibish there? Like Dr. Abrais and Kote Teira. Mm, that one drop of the Kionis, one drop of the Mediterranean, <clears throat> uh, is, is how could you compare it, compare it to all the waters, the Pacific and the Mediterranean? This is one drop, the whole Elam Baba, the whole Ganeiden is one, the Kudaktan, compares to the whole Eibishter. Where's the whole Eibishter? In Shnai Mechs and Batalis, in Halach, in Inyan and Teira. So when a person opens Teira, it's not like he's connecting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu because he's being, he's trying to follow Hashem's ideas. Hashem is Teira. And so too, when we speak about this, part of this, the Chuma, of Nisab HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem wanted to have a dwelling place in this very physical world. That the 
the Hashem's core essence is about Adira Batakhtainim. It's not on the bottom of his list and it's not on the top of his list. It's who he is. So a consumption into HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to Klaes HaNefesh Mamosh, what does that drive the person? To have come out with a, a new set of passion to make Hashem Adira Batakhtainim. A 180 degree. It's not about myself being consumed. And yes, once I'm consumed into Hashem, into the presence of Hashem, what is Hashem, not what Hashem wants, what is the core of Hashem, making the Eivish that in place in this world. So the whole, like a paradigm shift, transpires within the person's whole subsequent Avedis Hashem, in other words, this whole Avedis Hashem, is that there's a revolutionary change. His whole passion is that there's entire world becomes a dwelling place for HaKadosh Baruch as we mentioned the other day. If you understand, if you can appreciate a Yid which, which has that passion is because he is part of the godly reality. And this is what the Alter Rebbe, as it, to, to understand this a bit better, again, we pointed out last week, we'll say it again this week, see, the 36th and 37th chapter, again, a click away, which Alter Rebbe goes through and navigates this whole idea that everything else is a Yerida Mishmei Yisbarich the whole Gan Eden is a Yerida L'Gabe HaKadosh Baruch Hu it's a great descend from HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the Ebishter is not Gan Eden Gan Eden is a Eilam and a Eilam is a Lashon Helam V'Hester it's because one day the Gan Eden is one Akuda the whole entire Ebishter is in Teira. The whole entire Eivishter is about Dira Batachtenim. It's about this world being elevated and being sublimated to Elokus, towards Elokus, in other words, being imbued with the energy of Hashem Echot. That's who the Eivishter is. So this is, again, you can see it in chapter 36, 37. <clears throat> and, and, this all, and this is the message over here. That Imrotz Libcho he begins shuv levad. It ends up shuv again, a total 180 degree, a, a focus on elam to elevate and sublimate elam towards and to 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 have the Abish to have a dira v'tachtenim, a dwelling place in this very physical world, like it says in Shemesh Kasev Yitzira, like it says in says in Sevi Yitzira. Vimrot slip chashuv lechot. Your heart is running, meaning to say it has that fervor, is passion to Hashem, shuv echot turned to echot. What is turned to echot? Peter's we not sleep This is the not sleep which the message of this, or the experience illustrated in this chapter, this is the not sleep which Sefer Yitzir is referring to. That if this chukas an nefesh belev v'cholah yimami, in other words, this not sleep your heart running, this is the desire of the soul. But it, 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 which is expressed again in the heart, in the right side of the heart. As we explained this in the past, it intensifies and engulfs into in a fervorous love to Akkadj Baruch when he says, Ma'id, Ma'id. Again, we mentioned this in the past, but Chlal Ma'id is that Eina Reich description. What could be greater? If it was self-sacrifice, no, but is beyond that. And even one ma'id has a different message, a total different message. Even as it says many times in 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 or in the Brata, many many places in Svarim, wherever the Torah says ma'id, there is a uh, exceptional message which does not come out in any other expression like we say with all your might which is again has a certain sense of this even the believable of the person because that's his believable carries somewhat of the believable of HaKadosh Baruch Hu the ma'id of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and when you have double ma'id that comes across in Teda as the commentaries explain in, in when they explain different these expressions in Teda itself it says this is something which is to, a, to, in a total different level and over here also as we can understand and we learned the message and appreciated the message of Peirik Nun we can understand what Al Trebbe says over here ma'id, ma'id. so when the person has this experience in a way of ma'id, ma'id, and then it leads to Kleis HaNefesh Mamosh Mamosh Kleis HaNefesh to melt 
and to allow itself to pour itself out. And again, the Ishtabal is an expression of melting, like water is, um, as opposed to something which is congealed, which is firm water, is something which pours because it's a, it's a liquid which is synonymous with this, which, uh, which uh, with the terminology of melting, so there's the, the, um, the, the experience of melting, of this liquid, so it's able to melt away. So the expression of the neshama, it melts away, it pours into Chaik Ovia, its father's bosom, which is the Chaya Chaim Baruch Hu, the source of all life, blessed be he. The, the experience, again, this is a continued illustration of that experience, and to emerge from its incarceration, in its imprisonment in the physical and bodily body. To cleave to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Ozai the Sefer Yitzira says, "Shuv la'echod yiz yiz yashav al dibe my merazal." At that point, exactly at that juncture, there's a whole 180 degree change, and the person pays attention to the following: "My merazal ki al korcho chatochai b'kufazel achyese." That you were given a choice to be created and to be born, you were compelled to be born, and you're compelled to live till the Abishta decides that you have completed your mission. You are alive compellingly, and the whole purpose why you're alive is to give the body life. Means to say that it should be the fusion between the shom and guf, and the guf should continue to live. Kidei in order to laham shechayim al yenim mechaya chayim baruchu lemato to draw the supreme life from the source of life. Blessed be He lemato down here in this world that they teira shechayim through a teira of life. So liyis dira b'tachtenim to make the akodesh baruchu in a boat a dumber soul over here in this very physical world. Lachdusa yis baruch that this world should carry the banner and should be, be imbued by the oneness, the message of Hashem Echad, the oneness of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, not in a conceptual manner, but in a gilui, in a revealed, manifest manner. Kemishis bar like we said, we explained before. Kemishukos bezeira kaidish lemevi echod beechod, like it's brought the expression in zeira kaidish lemevi echod beechod, that the oneness of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. The way it's so manifest on high in the area where on high where the oneness of Hakadosh Baruch Hu is manifest should be fused with the Elam Gashmi that the this physical world should also be demonstrating and proclaiming and this should become part of the fabric of Elam that as such Elam continues to demonstrate Hashem Echad Ushmei Echad because there was the fusion of Echod be echod, the way area where echod of Akod Baruch Hu is totally manifest has penetrated Elam Hazeh, that this world demonstrates and proclaims and becomes the mere nature of Elam Hazeh. It's a world which demonstrates and proclaims and 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 protests that oneness of Akod Baruch Hu. Peter Shayichud Hanelam Yivachin is Almedis Gali that this concealed oneness should be in a way. Again, in a revealed way, that the Eilam should be Megala, should reveal Elokus. Again, and this is, this transpires, Dafka, when the person is alive in Eilam Hazeh, with a healthy goof, a healthy Neshama, and a healthy goof, and the com- combination, again, of Nefesh and the healthy Nefesh and healthy goof and the Neshama, combined with that Nefesh and goof, and is alive, physically alive. Because when a person is only when a person is physically alive, is he able to learn Torah and do mitzvahs and introduce this message of Hashem Echod in this physical world through Torah's Chaim, through the message of the living Torah, in order to establish a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And that is what a Kodesh Baruch Hu is. So when the person reaches that level of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, that's the only desire he has. So the Seder Aveda is a 180 degree. The natural expression, what the Sefer Yitzit is not only telling the Yid, well, you have that Klaisa Nefesh, really, it's wonderful, but turn your head the other way because you got to live, you got to go do it to the Tehram. It's much deeper than that, according to the Alter Rabbi here. The, the natural result of Rotz Libcha is Shuv Echod because you became part of the godly reality, and the godly reality is 
that taiva lias like dirva tachtenim. That is the core of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That is the the the, the etzim of Hakadosh Baruch Hu is about dirva tachtenim. You see, Hakadosh Baruch Hu lias lois baruch like you see this explained lois lats musay. And then taiva comes from just like we did by the human being. Explained mentioned this last week as well. The taiva comes from a very deep level within the person, beyond the rationale, beyond the structured evolution which exists from coming from the nefesh of seichel is me. So it's beyond that. It's the taiva, it's like the covet which even Chaman it, it not necessarily you know, describing the taiva not necessarily it's always a description of a good taiva but the concept we could appreciate the taiva comes from a very deep place within the human structure. And it's beyond the human structure if you will. And the same thing when it comes to Kodesh Baruch Hu, it says Nisava Kodesh Baruch Hu is later with Tachtenim. The Rebbe Rashab explains in his Memorim in length you know, the, the entire Chassid is Dal Terebe as Lokot Yitayda. And here, the Rebbe makes it very clear in Perik Lamed Vav Lamed Zayin, but the Rebbe expanded on this. The Rebbe Rashab navigated through this very, very uh, clear, very um, uh, expansively in his Memorim in Tafresh Samach Vav. Um, explaining the different reasons which are given for Hashem's creating the world. In the end of it, he says, no, it's about this taiva. And the taiva is associated with the core essence of Akadosh Baruch Hu. And you connect the lois, Baruch Hu, is the atzmusi, the atzim of Baruch So when the person reaches that level of place of the it becomes part of the godly reality. Consequently, it's shuv echod. What is Hashem? So my whole entire Seder Aveda is that the entire world should demonstrate the Hashem echod because that is who Akadosh Baruch Hu is. This is what it says. The Kras Kalop and Shabbos the Kavanah to explain the Chodedi, the 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 I believe the the Chodedi doesn't explain over here. Um, probably the Dedi is the idea of that connection on a uh, this type of connection, this type of Av Dedi Moshe. But beloved, yes, my beloved one. But again, I'll have to look this one up. There's a chodedi. Slips my mind. I must say, but we're going to go on. Was a yuvah my merazal. Or let's just get back to it. Was a yuvah my merazal. A kor chatachai, a kor chatachis. And Al Tzeb doesn't use, which is again his, his expression, the famous gemaras, and the uh, which just to point out also, you see that Abayim, they were always careful. Nothing, even when they quoted a mishnah. But if they had anything negative, they would always say the chulu. It's important to know because you see it throughout Tanya or Bechal, the Rabbein per se. They're, they're exceptional, exceptional Hashem Tehera. Not only has to show them a, a, an expression which was would be that bold and perhaps it would carry negative energy, but even something which seems to be part of They always um, went to the extreme far right. Again, based on the Gemara, the famous Gemara, which says that the way a person expresses himself that's where he's holding, but you can see the purity of the Rabbeim when I come to this period. You know, many other Lashayinists and Tanya, we found that by our Rebbe, extremely, so many times he didn't say the word Ra, Hei Bechatev, it's, it's interesting on its own, perhaps for another time, but you see over here, in a, quite a few times, in Tanya, the Alter Rebbe would just make sure that he had the ability, rather, to write something in a way of a Chulu, not to write any negative expression, he would do so. Which is right over here. You're compelled to live in, and no one's asking. In other words, you're, you're, no one asked you to be born, and no one asked you when you pass on. So this is again the message over here, which Al Tzedek is trying to explain. So it's just a matter of, you know, it's not like a long Maimon Azal, which he just says v'chulu. It's just a matter of two words. Al Karchat Ames. Al Tzedek writes v'chulu. I'm just saying this tangentially because we see this throughout many times in Tanya. Rebbe tries to omit any negative expression, even this which he's going to explain, and you have to know that Mishnah, even though it's a Mishnah which is famous, and again, you could infer from these words itself, what is it? <coughs> Just the opposite, right? So, back to the message over here. What's his Ratzin? What does it mean? It's such a paradox. Al korcha chatochai means to say, I don't want to live. Not interesting. This is messy. The quagmire of Elam Hazer 
doesn't, I don't have the patience for it. It's such a complicated and as we all know it, and the challenges and the other spiritual challenges and obstacles a person has. The Gemara said, person that he come into this world, he leaves this world as pure as he came in. So what's the deal? What, what, why the whole the whole idea? And the person really is not interested. He doesn't. He won't cast for shalom, do anything to compromise his life. God Hashem says you're not allowed to. It, it in the end of the day is one of the gravest sins. The person should do something, should compromise his chayim agash, his physical life to the extent to the to the to the matter the opposite. When he shmartem meoid lenafshi seichem, there are a few places that Rishda says. Vinishmartem and Ma'oid, yeah, we have a Shomer and so on, but Vinishmartem Ma'oid is a very unique expression because Taita tells us to make sure to guard our physical life with the greatest emphasis and the greatest scrutiny and so on. In other words, to look into everything which would contribute to the the uh, the, um, the 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 physical health and has not to compromise, nothing should ever compromise our physical health to what degree when he's smart it's a person won't do anything but in his the sensation is not in really interested in this whole thing especially a person knows what an Aveda is what does it mean uh, what does it mean chas v'shol violating Hashem's rots and not only in action not only in speech but even in thought and shemir sayinayim and it's something which is a whole uh, uh, it's a complex situation state so a healthy yid said I'm not interested in this and again, the Gemara itself says, a person would leave this world as pure as he came to this world. So what's the deal? question is on its own, what's the deal? We spoke about this a few times, and we understand, it based on this whole idea of Nisab HaKadosh Baruch Hu, there is a deal, but in the sensation of the person, not, not interested, really. And anybody asked the person, Asher Mishalei Nibra, the Gemara says, that if we wouldn't be born, and we could just make perfect sense of it. So our being here is al korchoch. Al korchoch means it's I, I'm compelled to do. So if you're compelled to do something, so you can't say you're compelled to do anything. If someone says you're compelled to fast, all the food is right around you, but I'm gonna force you're gonna be forced to not eat. You're gonna be forced not to have the chance to put the sandwich in your mouth. And then the same person can say, you're going to be forced to eat. I'm forced not to eat, says, because my drive is to eat. And that's normal when a person's hungry, is a drive to eat. So then it makes sense. You're forced to fast, theoretically, if he's compelled to fast, to be, he's forced not to eat that sandwich and so on. But you can't say in the same a phrase, you're forced to eat. If I'm forced to fast, it means to say, have a drive to eat. Have a drive to eat. You can't say, I'm forced to eat. You can't say two opposite expressions on both of them, you're forced to do so. It just simply doesn't make sense. So how does the Mishnah say, you're forced to live, meaning to say, in your sensation, you're not interested in the whole deal. Why is it Theoretically, conceptually, it seems something that, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm all for it. So obviously, you know, technically, the person looks at the bigger picture, his, 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 uh, his loved ones, and you know, his society is surrounding the consequences of, of it, but referring, focusing on the person himself, why is it all kachat if it's a korchat it's not a korchat it's to the contrary. And so too vice versa. So echi yiratzeni, what's that supposed to mean? That seems so paradoxical. O kamin jizbori, mokum achabarichas al mishnah zu. A korchat ha-chai, bezachai ha-chai, baruchu. So the Altareb is basically saying, before he concludes the chapter, he's saying, well, now we can understand. Imrotz libcha shuv la-echod. And this is the message of Sebi Yitzira. What do you want? The person wants, rotz libcha. He wants to have in his in his expression in this in his sensation. He wants to be completely consumed into the Ein Sof Baruch Hu, to the infinite reality of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And that would mean a total expiration, and that means a total consumption and being part of these men. We mentioned as Al Tareba writes in Pedic Yutes. Again, it's important to look at Yutes to see this message. We mentioned this last week as well. We speak of a total consumption to the in the Lukus. It's not that I am praised, that I have a place which identifies my 
Rotsui Telukus. When a person's consumed into the reality of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, he completely loses his whole entity. There's no Metzias at all. Just like the fire which jumps away from the wick, once it'll become part of the Shaita Shavesh, it, it ends up being nothing. Nothing at all. But the fire doesn't care, it just rather just be part of its shadish. It doesn't want to stay down here. Which is again the expression of this Ratsri Telakusvim Ratslipcha. The Ratsin of the the Yid wants to be completely consumed into the reality of Kaj Baruch, and therefore nothing remains. Balkorchoch, meaning to say that he's not interested in the Chai. But the the the, the, the same Maimrazal and the same phrase, Balkorchatachai, Balkorchatameis, means to say you find the Al Korchoch also in the Atachai, despite that you had that Rot Slipcha, which would cause a total expiration of your goof, there's a complete 180 degree because you connected to the Abish in a way that was a, a total consumption into the reality of Akkadj Baruch, and this reality of Akkadj Baruch is about Tira Batachtainim, so both of them remain true again and it could be said in one phrase based on this whole experience <clears throat> which leads to the 180 degree uh, um, a type of Aveda as we explain like it's explained elsewhere in length and elaboration of this, of this Mishnah the Ezra's Chaye Achaim Baruch with the help <clears throat> of the life the source of our life blessed be I could Baruch which is interesting, Dr. Rebbe so poetically concludes this painting in simple reasons. Because you're dealing with drawing the Chaya Chaim. And the experience of the Chaya Chaim is so emphasized in both expressions in this chapter. The drive and the passion of the Neshama to be part of this Chaya Chaim, and then to draw that Chaya Chaim down into Ilam Hazer is also the objective of that very Chaya Chaim. So the Alter Rebbe concludes this chapter that we will expre- explain the Akorchach Atochai, which is also following the word, those words Akorchach Atochai, with the help of the source of our life. Blessed be He. Have a wonderful night.